You know what I just noticed? Gryffindor and Slytherin. <laughs> um, so I'm here with my daughter, Dakota, and she just got home from third grade and I was going to make a YouTube video anyway. And I was like, cool, let's make a YouTube video and I'll just show you what mommy does at work all day. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. And this is something that I made last night. Do you know I was up really late last night? I was preparing for a training I was giving. I was making this and writing out all sorts of step-by-step -step instructions. And this is a dashboard about something called a colonoscopy. And when you use the, this is all like pretend data. This is nobody's real data. Um, when you click on this like pretend clinic A, like a doctor's office, then you can see how many people got the test that they were supposed to do. Like 14% of the people who were supposed to have this thing did have it. So that's actually kind of low. But when we are making up this pretend data set, we just, we're just typing in like gobbledygook pretend stuff. So I think in real life, I think the numbers would probably be higher. But see then look, if you look at clinic B, it's like it fills in. Do you see all the charts change? Yeah, isn't that kind of cool? Um, Cause you know what people used to do was they would do like, let's pretend like I work at clinic A and you work at clinic B and Isla works at C and Otto works at D. And it used to be that each of us would do this ourselves on our computer and that would take forever. And then it's like, everybody has to stay up late, right? Because everybody's making all these charts by hand. So now what we do, the fast way, the time efficient way is one person does this once, one template, and then you can use these slicers to slice and dice and get one clinic or one of the pretend doctors data at a time. This doctor screened, only had one patient and screened zero of them. I think in real life, these numbers might be higher, but again, made up numbers for today. Okay. What I wanted to show you and the YouTube people is just what this looks like behind the scenes. Cause this is the front of it, the front end that somebody would use, but behind the scenes, it is these four pieces. This is a really long word. Do you see this contiguous contiguous? It's a single contiguous data set that feeds into something called pivot tables, which I can't imagine you've ever heard of in your life. Um, but you hear me talking about charts sometimes, right? Yeah. Once I do, I make charts, mommy makes charts and then a slicer. That's the thing we, we just saw. These things are like the slicers or the filters. Um, okay. So it's, it's really, it, sometimes people get lost in the weeds and they think this is really complicated, but it's really just these four things. So it is a single contiguous data set. So this is, these are nobody's real numbers. These are nobody's real names. These that I used Rand between to make up pretend numbers, but it's got like all their pretend stuff. And then I do a lot of cleaning and recoding. For example, I might turn like uh, their birth date into an age, into different age ranges, depending on what I want to chart later. And then this data set goes into these things called pivot tables. Have you ever seen anything like this before? It's, these are called pivot tables. They tally it up. They look at like that whole data set of like, all these 5,000 people in the data set and they look at how many people are in these categories. And then from here, you add charts, like that's the pivot table that feeds into this chart. And from there you add the slicer. There is an optional intermediate step. It's this thing called a helper table. You know how I was in London just a couple of weeks ago? So I was at the Global Excel Summit and I was talking to all the other Excel trainers and authors and podcasters and bloggers. And um, we realized that all of us use helper cells and helper tables. So it means like if you want, um, okay, so let's say if you make a pivot table by race, that might not be exactly how you want your chart to look. For example, 
if you add a, a chart here, then it looks like this. Like you can make sure it's alphabetized, but you don't get too much more formatting control. So what I like is I like doing a helper table off to the side, but a helper table is nice because like if you want a gap in the charts that you can have these categories in intentional space and these others, you can do things like you can add a gap in the chart. And anyway, there's reasons for making helper tables. I have separate videos on that. I won't get into that today. Okay, can I show you how to do this from start to finish real quick? Yeah, okay, it'll be fast. Um, okay, so single contiguous data set to pivot tables, to pivot charts, to a few slicers. So it goes like this, you've got your data set, you click anywhere on it and you say, insert a pivot table. And I'm gonna put it in an existing worksheet. I'm gonna plop it down there. I try to stay organized with like names and, and things for myself. Yeah, I'll put it right there. And then I'm gonna drag and drop so I don't have to do any formulas or as few as possible behind the scenes. I will look at that. I'm going to filter by that. I wanna look at that. And let's make one for, I don't know, language? Why not? Language like that. And should we do percents? Let's do percents like this. Do you know mommy does this stuff all day? And then that's too many zeros. It makes my eyes bleed. That's better. Okay. Out of the Chinese speakers, zero are compliant. Out of the English speakers, 22 are compliant. The doctors did a better job screening these people than other people. Okay, and then, so we got that part. Data set, check. A pivot table, check. Let's add a chart. You click on your pivot table, you insert the chart you want. Let's do this one. It looks really ugly. Do you even know what you're looking at? It just looks like ugly crap because it's so little, it's so little in here. And then you would insert a, once you format it, insert a slicer. And we'll slice and dice by location. Let's do that. Slice, do you see this moves just like a little tiny bit? Slice, slice. I don't like that when I slice, see how these rectangles get different shapes and like there's only one rectangle and then for the, it like moves around. Do you see that's delayed too? It's kind of slow. I don't like that. That I think is really ugly and poorly formatted. Hence the helper tables, okay? Just so you all know. That's why I have a bunch of helper tables behind the scenes. Um, and the helper tables have things like, um, this is my favorite formula I've maybe ever written. Do you know that? It's called an index match, an index match match with an if NA. And it took a while for this to click in my brain, but once they did, it was game changing. So that's what this is. It's like the pivot table feeds into the helper table. Um, that's all. Do you know that's what mommy does at work? I do like little math, little math things, yeah? All right, should we tell people, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share? Do you wanna say it? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. All right, bye.